involved a kick out from Johnny Crowley, a wonderful catch at, at midfield by Liam Hassad, and a great point. And the bottom line is, it's not a football isn't about weaving intricate patterns and going all over the field. Yeah. Football, it's all about going direct. In this instance, again, it's quick movement. I think in this case, I mean, it led to a three-on-one situation. But the one thing is, look, they're finding the main, their support players excellent, they're moving at pace. There was a goal chance on, but per perhaps in the circumstances, take your point. But like that, it's quick movement, it's direct. But just getting back to Cockery, great thing. He won't pass any fitness tests, or he won't pass, his body percentage fat might be very high, but he knows what to do with the, with the yeah. ball when it's in his hands. Well, I suppose that all, that's all that matters at the end of the day. Just looking at the, the flash interview before our, the commercial break column, I mean, Pozzi O'Mahony looks stunned in that. I mean, it's okay saying, let's see what they do when they have the breeze, but they look, they look stunned. Yeah, there was an acceptance of defeat almost yeah. at this stage, you know, by Pazio Mahoney. But you, we saw what happened in Belfast. A couple of long balls in, maybe yeah. a couple of goals, and could turn the whole thing on its head straight away. Like, if Cork got two or three points to start and brought them back, even within six or seven of Kerry, you know, and didn't get your goal, you know, things can change around dramatically in the game. Derry panicked when Antrim started We're to come at them. We're no. <laughs> this <one. laughs> is it the life, the life well, is out again, is it? It looks like we won't need them this time, but I'm, I'm being very careful at this point because you never know. 35 minutes is a long time in football. One goal yeah. can have an enormous impact on any game, but Cork need a goal. They won't win the game on points. That's my prediction for the second that half. That's very safe. That's very, very safe. Let's have a look at the second penalty. Was this a penalty, Pat? Oh, I think it was. I think no doubt about it. And it was a needless and a quite unnecessary penalty to give away by Rowan McCarthy because the ball was going harmlessly wide or else maybe into Kevin O'Dwyer's hands uh, he'd never looked like getting it so I mean it was a needless penalty and I think uh, even if I, I'll, as a neutral I leave Cullum maybe really yeah, well, I, I would have I would have I think Mick Corley has done a very good job on the yeah. game I think he and uh, Dara O'Kaneda puts in the same spot but as far as I was concerned it was, uh, you know, as Panis says, it was a stupid penalty to give away, but it indicated a lot of what was happening in the Cork back line. They were being caught in the wrong position. When we saw Liam Hassett coming through with the ball, he was in front of his man making pace for the goals, and his man was 10 yards behind him. Uh, Ronan McCarthy was caught the wrong side of John, uh, John Crowley at that stage, so silly penalty, I think it's quite correct, and Mick Corley doing a good job. All right, gentlemen, teams back out in the field of Fitzgerald Stadium. Let's go back again to our commentary team. Am I on or not? Yeah, welcome back. There is a change in the uh, Kerry team for the second half. Killian Burns has been withdrawn. He was having a lot of difficulty against Scullet Corkery before uh, they decided to move Seamus Moynihan on to him. But the man who's come in now is... Uh, let me just have a little look here. It's Mike Hassett. The second half gets underway. So Hassett is in at full back right now. Moynihan has gone to the right to take up duty on Colin Corkery. And Kerry trying to start, like, the impressive stuff they showed us in the opening 35 minutes. Here's Eldon McGarrett, looking for a score, and that's a great start. He's got his first point. And within seconds of the restart, every one of the Kerry forwards has now got into the scoring act. Very simple but effective style of football, pleasant to watch. So now it's an 11-point gap that Corker tried to make up. He went by Martin Cronin. Stephen O'Brien gone back in towards full forward. Ball spills out towards Aidan Dorgan. He's fouled and it's a free to Cork. The Munster champions from last year in serious trouble. Well, that is the change that Kerry have been forced to make. Colin Corkery, so far he is one from three frees. But two points from play as well. Outside the 45 metre line. Moynihan is beaten for this one, is fisted on by Philip Clifford, but he's put the ball wide. Had a very poor first half, Philip Clifford. Didn't get a shot on target. And that from a player who's an all-star and team captain and one of the leaders last year. Well, the second-year syndrome can always be very difficult when players know all about you. But I think at the moment they have a huge task to claw it back, obviously. But again, on a positive note, if they can get enough ball into uh, O'Brien and Colin Corkery, you know, there are possibilities there for them. While mentioning Philip Clifford's performance, I think we should pay tribute to Michael McCarthy, who's done a good marking job. Once again, it's Darrow Shea, dragged back by Faulkner Collins. 
Good ball inside towards Daro Okineda. Oh, Halpin comes out to try and deny him space. Possibilities inside. Played beautifully in towards Edon McGarrett, playing close to the goal in the second half. Looking for his second point. Well, he's got to be content with the one he put over a little while ago, in spite of the fact that he's still arguing the toss. Kerry have reshaped their inside forward line to some extent. Drops out of the arms there of Fakna Collins. Owen Sexton delivering it long towards Philip Clifford and again McCarthy gets out. But Dorgan is in there in the follow-up. He's pulled back by Tom O'Sullivan. And the referee wants the free taken from the correct position. It's going to be Philip Clifford who will take this. And there's a little tick against Tom O'Sullivan's name in the referee's notebook. So will this be the first point for Philip Clifford? It's a fair distance out, but he has got that breeze behind him now. He connected well. Is it dropping short, however? It's fisted in by Colin Corfield and it's into the back of the net. Three minutes into the second half. Cork are given a chance. The fans a great deal happier. It was floated beautifully in by Philip Clifford. Kerry still ahead, however, by double scores. Here it comes once again. Watch for that big bony figure of Colin Corkery. In he comes. He pounced with decisiveness. This is caught here by Noel Kennelly. Kerry once again trying to tear this Cork defence to shreds and he's missed it and missed a very bad one. By his standards, that was a pretty simple chance. This, I suppose, is one of the dangers heading into the second half with such a huge lead. And how do you start the second half? You get a point and you stretch the lead to 11 points. Complacency may set in. It's a great, it's certainly a great boost to Cork. And as you say, uh, Gerard, the route one into the, into the full forward line may be their way forward to actually getting the scores they need. Corkery, who missed the first three chances he was given, has been the most menacing figure down there for that Kerry defence. Tomas O'Shea got away from Joe Kavanagh. Too many steps taken this time, however. The foul by Dara O'Shea. Free to Cork. Can they pounce for a second time? This time it's Seamus Moynihan, as he's been doing so much in a glittering career, coming out with style. And the man going down is Noel Kennelly. Free taken by Liam Hassett. Mike Frank Russell getting there ahead of Anthony Lynch. Still Russell. He has support. Daro Okineda. One man to aim at inside. That's Eldon McGarrett being marked over there by Martin Cronin. The Kerry man does well. The angle is very tight. Good block down. Nicholas Murphy was the one who's way, way back there. Learned his football at the Carrigaline Community School. He gets it forward towards Kieran Daly. Colin Corkery being a judge to have been dragged back there by the substitute Mike Hassett. Anxious Kerry fans now wondering whether they're in for a bit of a stormy second half. It's a thirsty day. Larry Tompkins has been having words with referee McCurley throughout this match. It started at the very beginning when Philip Clifford got a yellow card for an elbow to the goalkeeper. He also spoke with the referee just at the half-time break as the teams were leaving the field and the referee now ordering him back to the dugout. Darrow Shea, so influential in the opening 35 minutes. He's back on the goal line. Awaiting whatever perils may accrue from this Cork sideline kick. They're there in numbers, Hassett and O'Shea. Colin Corkery has gone across to take it. Philip Clifford has been spoken to by the referee. A 
think the idea is he's saying to us, core captain, you go across, talk to your team coach and manager Larry Tompkins. Very rarely do you see this happening. Everybody's fired up. The occasion is a huge one. I've never in my time in football seen that before. In a way, possibly, I think McCurley abdicated his responsibilities there by actually asking the captain to do it. It seems that earlier he tried to get Larry to the dugout, Larry refused to do it, but Mick Hurley should have sent, uh, shown him a red card. Meanwhile, back at the ranch, red card or no, it's a red free. Free to Cork. But I have never seen that either, it's a very strange occurrence. Corkery kicking this from the sideline. Everybody in after it, but some of them there when they shouldn't be there. Square ball against two of the Cork players. Donald Daly manages to reach Eldon McGarrett. He's fed ahead beautifully. Now Johnny Crowley. Darrell Kinnada has been a wonderful target man this afternoon. He's lost his boot. And he takes too many steps in trying to get his balance, having lost the boot. And it's a free to Cork. Dropped up towards Colin Corkery once again. Saved here by Seamus Moynihan. Again, Kerry carried that ball deep. Good cut out this time by Anthony Lynch of Cork. There's still a loose boot out there. Darrow Kinnade has not been uh, reunited with his right boot just yet. Moynihan under pressure. Back there is Mike Hassett helping out. And trying to get that ball away with difficulty was Tamal Soche. And in spite of the fact that he might have taken a step or two too many, the referee says, we'll give you the free. Well, we're going to have a substitution for Cork very shortly. Donna Wiseman is about to enter the fray. Player who played in the opening match against Limerick, and Cork uh, experienced a lot of difficulty until the last few minutes of that game. Got a couple of late goals then. And it's Ronan McCarthy who is making way, I think, if that is what we suspect is going to happen. Nobody's left the field just yet. And now Ronan McCarthy is in fact leaving. So Wiseman on. Martin Cronin kicking and kicking it beautifully under the bar. He's had two shots at the target. And he's got two points. And he's made it 2-10 to 1-6 player who began his career as a half forward of course well will that be the start of something like a cork revival Mac martin cronin who's the holder of minor and under 21 medals from the early to mid 90s but he's looking for the big one broken down by nicholas murphy kerry were anticipating Eldon mcgarrett donald daly Sails in over Shonogo Halpin's head. Here's O'Dwyer, challenged by Russell. They get it out towards Cronin once again. Oh, Halpin. Here's Lynch. And he goes down, and the referee spotted the foul, and he calls across Dara O'Shea. O'Shea comes across to plead straight away, but the referee, Mick Curley, is saying, stay where you are. You're in trouble. I saw what happened. What will the referee decide to do here? Well, it's going to be a card anyway. It's yellow. Twelve minutes into the second half. Cork trying to continue their fight back, but Mike Hassett has it, out to Seamus Moynihan, loads of space in front of him, kick down towards Darrow Kinnader, cut out by Anthony Lynch, Cork with Kieran Daly here, from Island Rovers, fed inside towards Philip Clifford, looking for a first score, Although, of course, he was highly involved in the court goal. 
placing that free inside the small rectangle after Colin Corkery went chasing in after it. This time the referee noting numbers once again. Seamus Moynihan the one. Well, he's the kind of player, Moynihan, you could play in almost any position. Corkery's kick is good. And he's now got a goal and four points. The goal from play, two of the points coming from play as well. And Cork trailed now by six points. Yeah, they only trailed by six points and like there's 23 minutes yet to go. And a couple of things are noticeable. Anthony Lynch is starting to get to the ball before Michael Frank Russell. They're starting to win the breaking ball at midfield. And looking at that there, Darrow Shea possibly was lucky not to have been given a red card. Well, it really would have spoiled what was a terrific performance from the first half. One we will remember. His brother is here, however, Tomas O'Shea. Former under-21 star towards McGarrett, another one of those to excel at that grade. Dara O'Shea. Picks out John Crowley beautifully. It's a lovely ball. Wiseman's after him. Donna Wiseman commits the foul, and it's a free there from about 13 metres out. But it was such a perceptive ball there by... Dara O'Shea for Johnny Crowley. <laughs> Philip Clifford still to score. And that by Noel Canelli is a second point. One from play, one from a free. And the young and the beautiful, especially in the Kerry colours, are enjoying themselves. It's 2-11 to 1-7. Faulkner Collins taking this free kick beyond Philip Clifford, anticipating Joe Kavanagh, and sliding in there was Tom O'Sullivan. Joe Kavanagh wants to take the free kick quickly. Well, they decide in the end to leave it to his uh, Nemo Rangers colleague, Colin Corkery. A goal and four points so far for the number 15. And that one flies inside the left-hand post. He's keeping them in touch. Very much so. And it's noticeable, actually, that when the ball goes anywhere into the Kerry defence at the moment, they're not that self-assured. They're starting to give away frees. But again, the supply from midfield needs to be on a more regular basis than what we've been than what Cork have been getting up to date. There really is wondrous sport here for both counties. The neighbours' children in action, as it were, down in Killarney. Fat the Collins here. And of course, there's always the greatest of rivalry between these two counties. I'm sure Raymond Lowney who's from Athlone watching against Sydney, is enjoying the match. Kieran Dilley, here's a chance, he fists, and he has put that ball wide. That's an amazing miss. Well, he's a young player, scored a goal late in the match against Limerick. Island Rovers, also the club, of course, of Fakna Collins, the midfield player. Larry Tompkins points the way. Kerry are contemplating a change. And there is a switch in the core forward line. Philip Clifford has been brought out to right half forward. And that is in a switch there with Bernie Collins. Ball spills away here to Tom O'Sullivan. Canelli. Oh, that comes away from Donna Wiseman. He was lucky to get the second chance as Mike Frank Russell came in. But it was bouncing off the young Cork defender's chest. Nicholas Murphy. Cork trying to capitalise on any possible weaknesses. Possibly Kerry running out of steam here and there. Martin Cronin. 
belted in beautifully and again some good defending by Michael McCarthy helped out there by Mike Hassett there's his brother Liam Darrow Shea returning the favour Kerry at will carrying it forward lovely movement good creativity Russell in over the head of John Crowley Donna Wiseman going back there umpires having a right good look at it Cork build from the back Owen Sexton that difficult ball and they did well to get a free kick out of that because it was a very poor pass to Aidan Dorgan and again Tom O'Sullivan coming in to commit the foul and I think Fiona Murray is about to come in and Morris Fitzgerald is coming in again playing against Cork for the 12th time in the championship how will these late changes materialize and how will they make a difference Donald Daly goes off Bernard Collins has gone off the Cork team coach is able to use five subs this is the guy who scored three goals in three games last year up towards Philip Clifford can he do better out at half forward and this time it's Tamal O'Shea who pulls him back free to Cork and the number of O'Shea is noted well there are still 16 minutes remaining a place in this year's Bank of Ireland Munster football final at stake mid-July Philip Clifford from Bantry Blues has put that one over the bar his first point of the match Cork fans will feel there is still time if they're good enough that's very true, Ger. They're nibbling away at the Kerry lead. And I mean, if their confidence stays high and if they keep trying to put the ball in and, and even vary the way they're putting the ball in somewhat, they're still in there with a chance. Five points between the teams. Kerry led at one stage by 11. Early seconds of the second half. There's Owen Sexton from Kilbritton. Broken down again. Good anticipation by Kieran Daly. Oh, Daly fumbles. Fortunate in the end of it, bulk it up towards Colin Corkery. But Seamus Moynihan wins it back. Does the simple thing, just lays it off. Tom also show. Liam Hassett, who was involved in the move, has continued his run forward. Taken in here by Johnny Crowley. Fouled by Martin Cronin so lots of switches and changes it's worth going back actually to that pass for Michael Frank Russell it was an absolute gem the, uh, the vision that he displayed in that and finding Crowley was uh, just worth watching so many talented and imaginative players on view Darrell Pineda four frees taken four scores so far and that's now a fifth So now he's got two goals and three points. And Kerry have a six-point lead. Cork, you feel, need another goal. Murphy, ahead towards Aidan Dorgan. Three Kerry men are giving chase. Moynihan about to come out towards him. And Dorgan has kicked it over the bar. His second point. Nip and tuck. Well, the young ladies here were wishing him on I suppose to get a goal that time but he was content and happy to take the point encouraging from a, coin, a core point of view the response is immediate each time and one thing about them throughout the field they're much more gung-ho in the way they're going for the ball in this second half than they were in the first I think we've seen the true character of this core team during the second half they've come from a way way back and show that they were simply not going to be beaten out of sight Nicholas Murphy Clifford getting more into it now as a half forward that was a good switch here comes Fakna Collins towards Colin Corkery 
Great catch by the big man. He's held. Mike Cassett commits the foul. Cork have the free. It's in a very scorable position. An agonizing look on the face of Mike Hassett. So Colin Corkery with a goal and five so far, and this should be a goal and six. He's just 21 metres out. No trouble to him. Cork fans will wonder, where was he for the last couple of years? It's 2-12 to 111. Corkery seven scores from 12 shots is in the shots in the match the main thing is he responded to Larry Tompkins invitation to come back he knuckled down to training he got himself a lot fitter and sharper and Cork fans feel they just might come out of here yet with uh, a possible victory it looked most unlikely some 20 minutes ago Morris Fitzgerald let's see what an influence he will have Morris is in around midfield at this stage. There's another shove and there's another free. Stephen O'Brien just saying to Colin Corkery, you step up, you hit it with your usual aplomb. 11 minutes remain in this match. This time it's about 40 metres out. Breeze behind him, same result. A goal and seven for the number 15. But when you look through the rest of the scoring spread, it just doesn't match up to a winning combination. But now there's only a goal in it. Aidan Dorgan's got two points from play. Philip Clifford got a point from a free. The rest is down to Corkery. Kerry win it back. O'Shea intercepted Stephen O'Brien battling Kerry battling as well to get it back lots of pressure play around midfield here's Seamus Moynihan the cool head and there's a bit of jostling and in the end Kerry get the free kick they will certainly have been shaken by the nature of the Cork rally in the second half but they must have been anticipating that and there's a boot flying in there Cork protests, but it's a free kick to Kerry. Now it's Kerry's turn to just slow the match down a bit. Dara O'Shea. Well taken in by Evan McGarrett. Back towards O'Shea. Johnny Crowley. Challenged by Donna Wiseman. Still he holds on. Good combined play here by Kerry. Just holding possession, working for a better angle. What a cheer there will be if this went over from Morris Fitzgerald, but he's put it to the left. Morris Fitzgerald today appearing in his 33rd, 34th ever championship match. Here's Sean Ogo Halpi. Kieran Daly being roared on by the Cork fans. They look dead and buried at half time. Here's Joe Kavanagh. Moynihan going down. Ball touched on the ground. The man to touch it on the ground, the referee decides, was Aidan Dorgan. And the free to Kerry comes out here towards Dennis O'Dwyer. He's just in in the last couple of seconds. And in place of Liam Hassett. Pressure again being exerted by the Cork backs on the Kerry forwards. Faulkner Collins. Philip Clifford. He's pushed from behind. Tomas O'Shea. Remonstrates with the referee. What a free to the Munster champions. Will they still be the Munster champions in nine minutes' time? Just a goal between them. Here's Dennis O'Dwyer. That's a great bit of movement here. Lynch fell at the most inappropriate time. Left Mike Frank Russell with an opportunity. There's a partial block on it. And a little fumble by two defenders inside. Darrell Kinney there firing it across. Intended for Johnny Crowley, comes out instead towards Martin Cronin. But Anthony Lynch just lost his way there, but got back and got the faintest but most decisive touches on the ball and stopped that effort by Mike Frank Russell. Cork counter, stopped by Moynihan. Fabulous play. 
Eldon McGarrett trying to go by Kieran Daly. Again, very good use of possession. Johnny Crowley. Great movement inside. Mike Frank. They keep it going towards Tomas O'Shea. It was a difficult one. And credit Philip Clifford, who tracked back the whole way. And the court captain got a vital interception. Anthony Lynch. Two men of West Court. Owen Sexton. He was fouled by Morris Fitzgerald. Kerry are rattled. But Cork still have it all to do. Over seven minutes left. O'Halpin waiting for movement ahead of him. Aiming it towards Joe Cavanagh. Difficult one to take. Instead, it's Tom O'Sullivan. Eamon Fitzmaurice. It's a big one inside. Johnny Crowley deemed to have been dragging back his marker, who has done a Wiseman. Wiseman from Castletown Bear. The minutes running out. The champion still in trouble. Kerry, who were the favourites, have a three-point lead. Joe Cavanagh. Finnan Murray was uh, fouled, or deemed to have been fouled, by Michael McCarthy, the man from Kilcommon. This turned out to be a right good cornerback. Kerry followers feel that there was a bit of gamesmanship there, but Cork have got themselves a free kick. Now this time, they may wait until Philip Clifford has come forward. Having worked his socks off to try and get the ball at the other end, or at least keep it away from Kerry, he looks quite weary as he comes up to hit this with a left boot. You really have to hand it to Cork in the second half. Ten points down at halftime, they have battled, battled, battled. And, like, if he kicks this point, they're within two points of them, and anything can happen over the last couple of minutes. So a fresh man in for Kerry. Philip Clifford striking this one. It's not curling enough, however. It's gone wide, and it could be a costly miss. They left it to the man with the left boot to kick it over rather than give it to Colin Corkery. It was a tight angle. They should have left it with Corkery. Clifford came from the left cornerback position down to take that free kick. I think by the time he got there, he was exhausted. Ender Galvin is the man who's just come in, and Johnny Crowley is the man who's made way. Five minutes are left. It was Kerry's first half, but Cork with a magnificent fight back for 30 minutes so far on the second. Owen Sexton lets it drop. Dennis O'Dwyer coming on to it. Outgunned in there, however, and uh, Nicholas Murphy. This very tall figure in midfield. And the referee is probably going to throw the ball in there, possibly between Murphy and Dara O'Shea. So who's got a really good last five minutes in them? Martin Cronin doing a lot of soloing. Finally belting it in towards Murray, and Murray, the referee says, was dragged back, and it is another free in for Cork. This can put two points between the teams. Larry wants everything just cooled down now. I think he's looking for his team just to retain their cohesion and their composure and realise they still have four minutes to play after this. Colin Corkery to kick. Score of a goal and seven points out of Cork's 1-12. And that is another one to his credit. It's frankly foolish and a waste of time giving away freeze to Colin Corkery anywhere within 40 yards out from goal. He'll put them all over the bar. If people are looking for a reason as to why Kerry have gone out of it, the middle third of their field has been unable to pick up breaking ball in the way they were doing it in the first half. Cork win it back once more. Owen Sexton. Stephen O'Brien. A really battling performance by the Reds in the second half, and coming across in there, Noel Finelli. Kerry fans are furious with that decision. Oh dear! Dreadful free kick by Stephen O'Brien. He was anticipating Martin Cronin coming from wing back, and he was trying to utilise space, and in the end, the foul has been committed by Cork's uh, wing half. Fouling end to Galvin. 
the breeze has died down noticeably during the second half. That was an inexcusable mistake by an experienced player. The danger area is in front of the goals for Cork to be winning frees and to play it across the middle of the field and have at that nature of a turnover at such a critical period was a disaster for Cork. 2-3 so far for Dara O'Kinnade. Cork should have been attacking. Instead it's Kerry Stern and they put it over the bar. That's six points taken, or six scores from six shots. Two of them, of course, were wonderfully taken penalties after 24 minutes and 32. Not too many really in the crowd, I think, felt there was any doubt about the merit of those penalties. Morris Fitzgerald rising up beautifully. Here he comes. Man has come back from two broken legs over the last year. Shadow Gohalpi. What a great player he is, hurler and footballer. Touched down there by the wing half, coming back in, and Fitzmaurice has it again. Joe Cavanaugh is challenging. <laughs> they come once more, the raiding Eldon McGarrett. Got that first point of the second half. Coming in from this side once more. Taken in by Kevin O'Dwyer. Now Martin Cronin. His form had been patchy in the build-up to this game, but he's played really well here. <laughs> Kerry still shading it. Cork needing a goal. And just about a minute remaining. But it's Kerry here attacking. Mike Frank Russell to put it beyond Cork's reach. A great point. His third of the match. Kerry fans are celebrating. Mike Frank has had three shots at the target. Three points for P. Shea's team. And the Bonish Thor looks like he's going to have a happy journey back to Ventry. But there is still some seconds to go. Darrow Shea. Great catch. Erdogan McGarrett. Beautifully inside towards Mike Frank Russell. Trying to round Anthony Lynch. It's never been easy. And he takes too many steps. And it's a free out to court. Well, it's been an amazing match. Cork were being hammered home, it seems, by half time. And then dropped another point in the first second of the second half but they fought back valiantly to try and hold on to their title against their greatest rivals. Here's Philip Clifford, the Cork captain. Kerry still with an advantage. Cork need a goal. And even that may not be enough. It's taken by Corkery. It's hit straight at Seamus Boynihan. Nice ball outside towards Dennis O'Dwyer. Kerry have created 27 chances so far, Cork 23. Those penalty goals have been very, very important. Anthony Lynch. Well, when Cork had a chance of getting within a point or so of Kerry, that wayward pass from the free by Stephen O'Brien has seen now further pressure on the Cork goal. And in comes Dara O'Kaneda. Two goals and five, seven scores, seven shots. The subs are happy. Celebrating fans all over the kingdom. He's had a wonderful game, Darrell Kaneda. And I can tell you, picking a man of the match from this is not going to be easy. Fuck the colour. Beautifully taken by Joe Kavanagh. All of it coming a bit late, however. Fionnall Murray. The goal here from last year, and that's stopped, and it's gone for a 45. Good save by Declan O'Keefe. Declan, who is a guard, as I said, based in Cork. And this was Fionnall Murray coming in, and a wonderful save.
Declan O'Keefe continuing to issue the instructions to his defenders. That's just the first 45 of this match. Philip Clifford, I think, at this stage, appreciating that uh, Cork will be unable to hold on to their title. And that's wonderful defending back there. Darryl O'Shea kicking it out of the ground. Kerry fans are having a wonderful afternoon because they had a super platform going in at half-time, leading by 10. Dara O'Kineda contributed two goals and five points. And in midfielder Dara O'Shea, they had another match winner. But there were heroes everywhere. Mike Frank Russell with three points. The monster champions of last year are out of the Bank of Ireland Championship for the year 2000. Paulie O'Shea and the county chairman there celebrating. And no wonder they have downed the colours of Cork and they're in the Munster final once again. Right, Everybody wants to get the interviews with all the key players, but here in Fitzgerald Stadium, it has finished. Kerry, 2.15, Cork, 1.13. Well, Paddy Shea, delighted Kerry manager, congratulations. You had to sweat a wee bit at the end, but it was a fantastic victory all the same. We did indeed, we, we, had, to, we had to put out all the stops in the end, and fortunately, you know, I suppose that Cork really used up all their energies in trying to pull back the lead, and you know, we had a few, we, we had a, we had a, we had a few minutes or a, a, a little bit more in the tank in the end, you know. Now, you had 10 points going in at half-time. I mean, maybe that lulled yourselves into a wee bit of a false sense of security coming out for the second half, because Cork were there for the first 20 minutes. They were indeed, and, and the team, you know, who were down 10 points at half-time have really nothing to lose, and they took the game to us in the second half. They got a few, they got a goal very, very early on in the second half, and they tacked on a few points after that. But, you know, uh, when I felt comfortable enough when we were replying with a score, and, uh, you know, that's what we did in the end. And, and you know, we're absolutely delighted. Obviously, it's, it's great to win it back after being defeated last year. Now, people have been talking about the Kerry forwards and the league campaign, but it was a different thing to have to do it in the championship, and you must have been especially delighted with the forwards' performances. Well, we were delighted, but that, 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 doesn't, mean, that doesn't mean to say that we haven't a little bit more uh, room for improvement. I mean, an awful lot of talk before today's game was about our back line, and I thought that they played very, very well. And, uh, you know, on the day, it's, it's all on the day, really. But we still have an amount of work to do for the Munster final, and we're looking forward to it. For Margaret Party. For Margaret. So Kerry indeed through to the Monster final after a bit of a hard stop. How did the panel think of that second half? We'll find out after the commercial break. With New Palms Combination Tea Cleansing Towelettes, you can remove stubborn makeup and cleanse your skin in seconds. New Combination Tea Cleansing Towelettes from Palms.